Before the Mass Prepare yourselves well for it. Do not watch it with a cup of coffee in hand. Read the Mass readings to prepare yourselves. Think what you are to thank the Lord for and what to offer to Him this Mass. Remember, you are praying this Eucharist with many other fellow Catholics. During the Mass Stay in reverent gesture throughout the Mass. Pray with the whole family. Join in prayers, response, and singing. At the time of communion, make a spiritual communion. After the Mass, take some moments of silence to read again the scriptural readings and reflect. Ang ating morning prayer ay pinamumunuan ni Father Paul Hakome. Our God, 
listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness. When not Mary by my side, they challenged me and provoked me. Although they had seen all of Lord, and see my suffering, come quickly to my aid.
He has filled us with honey from the rock. He has filled us with honey from the rock. 
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, that through God's gracious will, he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory God, for whom and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. From every tribe and tongue and people and
this meal with you before I suffer. The Father anointed Christ with the Holy Spirit to proclaim forgiveness to those in bondage. Let us call humbly upon the eternal priest. Lord, have mercy on us. You went up to Jerusalem to suffer and so enter into your glory. Bring your church to the Passover feast of heaven. Lord, have mercy on us. You were lifted high on the cross and pierced by the soldier's lance. Heal our wounds. Lord, have mercy on us. You made the cross the tree of life give its fruit to those in baptism Lord have mercy on us on the cross you forgive the repentant feet forgive us our sins to be made holy, fill our hearts with your love. By the death of your Son, you have given us hope, born of faith. By his rising again, fulfill this hope in the perfect love of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
this time, we just have our morning prayer led by Father Paul Hakome. Every Holy Thursday, nagkakaroon tayo ng gathering, renewal of all the clergy. Magkakasama ang mga diocesan, religious, clergies, the young, the senior, even ang ating mga retired priests ay kasama natin every Thursday. Makikita natin, no, kanina sa ating morning prayer po ay kasama natin sila. Ngayon po ay naghahanda na rin tayo dahil maya-maya magsisimula na rin po ang ating Christmas na pamumunuan ni His Eminence Jose Cardinal Advincula, the Archbishop of Manila. Ang iba't ibang dioceses po ay nagkakaroon din ng Christmas sapagkat ito ay ang taunang pagtitipon-tipon na sa pamumuno ng kanilang obispo, ang mga pari po, diocesan religious ay nagkakatipon upang mag-renew ng kanilang vows. Kasabay din ito siyempre ay ang pagbasbas ng mga langis na ating gagamitin sa iba't ibang sakramento. Father Jason Laguerta at sa umagang ito sa misa natin bilang isang lokal na simbahan sa Manila, atin pong ilulunsad ang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Noong 2021, sinimulan po natin ang Aujam sa Arkham. Ito po yung ating synodal consultation para po sa Synod on Synodality. Ngunit narinig po natin sa maraming mga usapan at bahaginan na hindi dapat mahinto ang pag-uusap at pakikinig. Kaya ipinasya po ng ating mahal na arsobispo Cardinal Joe Advincula, na ituloy po ang ating synodality. Pero kailangan ito ng mga konkretong hakbangin. Kaya po, sa araw na ito, sa pangungunan ni Cardinal Joe Advincula, ilulunsad natin ang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Naghanda po kami ng isang maiksing video para ipaliwanag po ito. Pero wag po kayong mag-alala kung hindi man maintindihan sa umagang ito, ipapaliwanag at ilalahad natin ito sa mga susunod na araw sa mga parokya, dikaryato, mga ministry at apostolado. Narito po ang ating inihandang video para sa Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Traslasyon Samasamang paglalakbay tungo sa pagkapanibago ng Arkadiosesi ng Maynila. Ano ang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap? Ang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap ay ang mapang gagabay sa ating samasamang paglalakbay sa Arkadiosesi ng Maynila sa susunod na limang taon. Ito ay mga konkretong layunin at tugon bilang simbahan sa mga hamon ng panahon. Ang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap ay hango sa mga napag-usapan at napakinggan sa Aujang sa Arkham ang ating lokal na konsultasyon para sa Synod on Synodality. Sa ating mga isinagawang Aujang noong 2021, narinig natin sa mga salamat at sana ng mga kalahok ang pangangailangan ng patuloy na pagpapanibago ng simbahan. Sa pakikinig natin sa Espiritu Santo at sa isa't isa, naramdaman ng marami na hindi dapat matigil ang sinodo sa papel lamang. Kailangang ipagpatuloy ang pag-uusap at pakikinig sa iba't ibang antas at sektor sa loob at labas ng simbahan. Sa ulat ng ating sinodo o sinodal report, isinalarawan ang paglalakbay na ito bilang traslasyon, isang matandang tradisyon ng simbahan ng Quiapo kung saan sinasamahan ng mga deboto ang mahal na poong nasareno sa pagtahak niya sa mga lansangan ng Maynila. Anong traslasyon o pagpapanibago at pagbabago ang inihingi sa atin ng sinodo? Ayon sa ating ulat sa sinodo, 
ang ating traslasyon o pagpapanibago bilang isang arkadiosesis ay ang mga sumusunod. Paglalakbay mula sa sakit ng clericalismo o labis na nakasentrong kapangyarihan sa kaparian, patungo sa malusog na pakikilahok ng mga laiko sa buhay simbahan. Paglalakbay mula sa makitid na pag-unawa ng simbahan bilang mga kaparian at relihiyoso o relihiyosa lamang, patungo sa mas malawak na pag-unawa ng simbahan bilang buong bayan ng Diyos kung saan ang mga laiko ang nakararami. Paglalakbay mula sa isang simbahan kung saan ang pakiramdam ng mga mahihirap ay hindi sila kabilang. Patungo sa isang tunay na simbahan ng maralita kung saan ang mga damdamin at hangad ng mga dokha ay binibigyan ng tanging pagpapahalaga. Paglalakbay mula sa simbahan na hindi bukas sa tinig ng mga kabataan, nakatatanda, may kapansanan, mga kababaihan, mga biyembro ng LGBT, mga ibang relihiyon o den denominasyon, patungo sa simbahang naririnig ang tinig ng Diyos sa tinig ng mga napag-iiwan ng sektor o mga hindi kabilang sa simbahan. Paglalakbay mula sa simbahang kami-kami, kanya-kanya, walang pakialaman sa isa't isa, sa mga parokya, ministry, apostolado. Patungo sa simbahang nagkakaisa ang lahat ng parokya, ministry at apostolado sa landas tungo sa pinagkasundo ang mga layunin ng ating arkidiosesis. Saan tayo tinuturo ng sinodo at ng roadmap? Pagkatapos suriin at tasahin ang nilalaman ng mga konsultasyon sa audiang sa Arkham, nabuo ang mga tukoy na layunin o strategic objectives na magiging direksyon ng traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Hango ang mga ito sa mga sana na ipinahayag sa sinodo. Ang labing apat na layunin ay nakahanay sa limang punto de vista. Una, mamamasa o mga taong simbahan, ang mga laiko at kapariang nagpapasan sa puong nasareno sa ating paglalakbay. Pangalawa, proseso. Ang mga prosesong pinakamahalaga sa paglalakbay ng arkidiosesis at ng mga ministry at parokya. Pangatlo, kalakbay. Ang mga taong nakakasama ng simbahan sa ating traslasyon, kabilang man sa simbahan o hindi. Pangapat, katiwala. Pagiging mabuting katiwala ng yamang dala natin sa paglalakbay. Panlima, ugnayan. Pakikipag-ugnayan at pakikilakbay ng simbahan sa mas malawak na mga usapin sa kultura at lipunan. Sa loob ng bawat punto de vista, may dalawa hanggang apat na layunin o strategic objectives na nakaturo sa nais nating marating. Lahat-lahat ay labing apat ang nakita nating layunin. Ano ang mga susunod na hakbang natin? Sinimulan lamang ng traslasyon Arkham Roadmap ang pagsasalin ng sinodong audyam sa Arkham sa mas strategic na mga layunin at gawain na maaari nating tahakin bilang simbahan. Sa makatuwid, hindi pa ito tapos. Ang strategic map ay kailangan pang tasahin at iangkop sa antas ng mga parokya paaralan, ministry, apostolado, at mga iba pang pamayanan. Ang nabuong strategy map at mga strategic objectives ay magsisilbing gabay para sa paglalapat nito sa sitwasyon at pangailangan sa mga nabanggit na units ng ARCAM. Inaasahan na bago matapos ang Agosto ng taong 2023, ang lahat ng ARCAM units ay mayroon ng localized version ng traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Sa Setyembre, 
ilalahad ng mga parokya ang kanilang roadmap sa antas ng bikaryato. Sa commission naman para sa mga ministry. Sa Oktubre, sa antas ng mga lungsod, sa Arkadiocese. Sa Copa, Coform, Cure naman para sa mga ministry at opisina. Sa kapistahan ng Kristong Hari sa Nobyembre, inaasahan natin na nakabuo na ang ating Arkadiocese ng pangkalahatang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Babasbasan ito ng ating minamahal na Arsobispo, Cardinal Jose Advincula. Ang Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap ang magsisilbing gabay natin sa ating sama-samang paglalakbay sa pagpapanibago at pagbabago ng ating simbahan sa Maynila. Para sa mga tanong at paglilinaw, hinihikaya tayong makipag-ugnayan kay Father Jason Laguerta, ang inyong pong lingkod, bilang Episcopal Vicar for the Implementation of Translation Arkham Roadmap. Kasama natin sa grupo ng mga tagapagpadaloy si Father June Sascon, Father Ronnie Raldino, Father Leo Ignacio, Father Rico Ayo, Miss Ellen Junisio, iba pang mga laikong lingkod na katuwang natin sa pagpapalaganap at implementasyon ng Traslasyon Arkham Roadmap sa ating Arkadiocese. Narinig po natin si Reverend Father Jason Laguerta, ang Episcopal Vicar for Synodality, para magbigay po ng ilang mga informasyon tungkol sa ating gagawing translasyon Arkham Roadmap. Ito po ay ang pagpapatuloy ng nasimulan nating synodality na pinasimulan din po ni Pope Francis. Ito po ay ang pag papanibago, pagbabago ng simbahan dito lalo na sa Archdiocese of Manila. At kagaya ng sinabi ni Father Jason uh, sa mga susunod na araw ho, buwan ay mamuli natin mas higit natin mauunawaan. Ngayon po ay sisimula na po natin ang Christmas na pamumunuan ng kanyang kabunyaan Jose Cardinal Advincula Kasama po niya si Bishop Antonio Tobias, ang ating nuncio, apostolic nuncio, si Archbishop Charles Brown, kasama ang iba pang mga pari. Kasama rin si Monsignor Bernardo Pantin, ang ecclesiastic, ng ecclesiastical academic siya kasama natin sa mga magmimisa. Ginagawa ngayon ang isang maringal na prosesyon pagpasok ng altar ng ating mahal na Kardinal Jose Advincula kasama muli ang ating mga minamahal na obispo rin, Bishop Tobias, Archbishop Brown, ang ilang mga pari at diakono na makakatuwang din ni Kardinal mamaya sa pagbabasbas ng mga langis. Si Bishop Tobias ay ang dating obispo ng Diocese ng Nova Liches. Ang Manila Cathedral ngayon ay puno ng mga pari, mga relihiyoso at mga laiko. Binabasbasan ni Kardinal ang mga tao sa kanyang pagpasok.
ang pagbabasbas ng kardinal o obispo sa kanyang pagpasok ay tanda rin ng pagpapakita niya ng makaamang pagkalinga para sa kanyang kawan. Ang paghalik sa altar ay ang tanda ng pagbibigay galang kay Kristo na siya rin nire-representan ng altar. It also symbolizes the bond between Christ and His Church. Ngayon ay iniinsensohan na ni Kardinal ang altar. Sumisimbolo sa pagtataas natin ng ating mga panalangin sa ating Ama sa Langit. Ang pag-iinsenso ay isang malaking simbolo, a powerful symbol ng itinataas natin ang ating mga panalangin ngayon sa Ama sama-sama sa tulong sa pamumuno ng ating mahal na Arsobispo. Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in proximity of the celebration of the Christ who died, who was buried and resurrected, the heart and center of the entire history of salvation, we are gathered by virtue of the baptismal consecration and ministerial priesthood to proclaim God's marvelous works and to give thanks to the Father who in His Son, Christ Jesus, makes us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people whom He acquired for His own. Even the oil and the chrism which we bless in this Eucharist reminds us of remind us of the multiple gifts which the Father through His Son in the Holy Spirit entrusts to the ministry of the Church, the common priesthood, the ministerial priesthood, and the comfort and the liberation of those in grave sickness and in the face of death. Let us beg for His forgiveness for failing to be faithful to His love. Let us ask for the strength to be true to our calling to be God's faithful witnesses in the world. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my, in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ the Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet 
Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Sa unang pagbasa, ipinaalala sa atin kung paano the Anointed One, ang Mesiyas, ay magbibigay ng kagalakan, ng paghilom at ng paglaya sa kanyang bayan. Ganon din sa ikalawang pagbasa, narinig natin kung paano ang mga pari, ang mga laiko ay nakikihati sa misyon ni Kristo sa sakramento ng binyag. We all receive and share in the mission of Jesus, our Savior, through the sacrament of baptism. Ngayon po ay maririnig natin ang pagbasa ng mabuting balita na pamumunuan ng isa sa mga diakono. Pagkatapos siyang basbasan, ni Cardinal Advincula ngayon ay kukunin niya ang aklat ng mabuting balita upang magpahayag kung saan ang tinutukoy ng lumang tipan na siyang magiging kaligtasan, Mesiyas, ay matutupad kay Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on a Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue look intently at him. He said to them, Today, the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing.
Mananatiling nakatayo ang lahat upang tanggapin ang pagbabasbas ng mahal na kardinal. Muli narinig natin ang ebanghelyo kung saan tinutukoy si Jesus na katuparan ng pangako ng lumang tipan, ang Mesiyas na magliligta sa kanyang bayan. Ngayon po ay pakinggan natin ang homilia ni Kardinal Advincula. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Antonio Tobias, Bishop Emeritus of Novaliches. Dear brother priests and deacons, men and women in consecrated life, seminarians, our esteemed lay faithful from the different parishes and communities in the Archdiocese of Manila, brothers and sisters in Christ. Every year, we hold this Christmas as we always do with the other seasons and celebrations in our liturgical calendar. In the Christmas, we perform two very important acts, the renewal of commitment to priestly service by our priests and the consecration of the chrism and the blessing of the oils for the sick and for the catechumen. Why do we do this? Why do priests have to publicly renew their priestly promises every year. Does it mean that there is an expiration to their promises? Aren't we supposed to be priests forever according to the order of Melchizedek? And how about the holy oils? Do they lose their efficacy or power after a year? Do they cease to be sacred or holy after some time? The answer, of course, is no. The promises of the priests are lifetime commitments. The sacred oils will never cease to be bearers of God's presence. We renew, bless, and consecrate them, not because the divine element has departed from them, but because the elements of creation, the physicality of our faith, may experience some weakening and deterioration. Priests, human as they are, human as we are, may forget and lose our zeal for the mission. The oils may lose their fragrance and effective material qualities. We renew bless and consecrate our priests and our holy oils every year because we believe that though God's grace is constant and faithful, we are not. God's anointing is ever strong. We are not. Ecclesia Semper Reformanda Ecclesia Semper Purificanda. The Church is always in need of reform. The Church is always in need of purification. 
In the words of St. Thomas Aquinas, Gracia non tolit naturam, sed perfecit. Grace does not destroy nature, but perfects it. Let me repeat what I said last February 6, 2023, on the occasion of the closing of the Jubilee Door of the 500 years of Christianity and the 444th anniversary of the establishment of the Diocese of Manila. There are many areas in our lives that need recreating. Our faith needs to be renewed, and even the Church, and especially the Church, needs recreating. Ang simbahan na takot sa pagbabago, ang simbahan na ayaw nang magbago, ang simbahang kung paano noon, ganoon pa rin hanggang ngayon. Ang simbahang ganito ay mabilis tatanda. Magandang suriin natin ang ating mga parokya, pamayanan at institusyon. Baka naman tayo'y simbahan na ang mga gawain at programa ay paulit-ulit na lang pinamumunuan ng mga pare-parehong tao. Sila-sila pa rin at sila-sila na lang. Takot sa mga bagong pamamaraan, mga bagong ideya, mga bagong mamumuno na maaring magdala ng mga bagong ideya at pamamaraan. Kapag ganito ang simbahan, ang simbahang ganito ay matanda na. Hindi ganito ang simbahan ni Jesus. A church that is not open to renewal easily grows old, insignificant, and obsolete. But a church that is docile, responsive, and open to renewal remains ever young and vibrant. The key word for our celebration this morning is renewal. We all need to be renewed, not just the priests, but all of us, people of God. We need to summon the Holy Spirit once again to anoint us, to animate us. Our readings lead us to Jesus, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed, God's anointed one. He made us sharers in his consecration. He made us, he has made us into a kingdom priests for his God and Father. Any churches, any church renewal begins with and in Jesus. To be configured to Jesus. To put on his garment. Without conversion to Christ. Without living in his spirit. All our efforts of for renewal will only be external and temporary. If we want an authentic renewal, we must all be ready to surrender ourselves to Jesus and to allow Him to reform us 
and to purify us. Since the Second Vatican Council some 60 years ago, we have embarked on the difficult task of adjournamento or updating so that as a church we can respond to the challenge of the modern world. In 1991, 32 years ago, we held the second plenary council of the Philippines here in Manila with the same intention of renewing the church in the Philippine context. And in 1995, we convoked the Second Provincial Council of Manila to address the pressing issues being faced by the metropolitan province of Manila at the time. All these councils produced beautiful documents and inspiring messages. But we know very well that our reception and implementation of their acts and decrees have been found wanting. Sixty years after, we have yet to fully understand Vatican II. Thirty-two years after, PCP II's vision of a church of the poor is still a dream. Twenty-eight years later, we don't even remember that PCM2 happened. This is not to say that these ecclesial gatherings don't matter or that they have failed. This is to recognize that our mission of renewing all things in Christ is never finished or fulfilled. We are in a permanent state of mission. When we embarked on the local synodal process in October 2021, as a response to the call of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the Synod on Synodality, we decided to take the path of audium, of listening. We listened to the Holy Spirit. We listened to one another, including those that I rarely listen to in the church. In our synodal report, we have discovered the joys of kwentuhan, ang pagsasama-sama. Sa mga salamat ng mga kalahok, narinig natin ang kahusayan at kagandahan ng ating mga parokya at mga pamayanan. Sa mga sana, narinig natin ang mga panaghoy at hinagpis ng marami dahil sa mga sugat ng simbahan at mga pangarap na hindi maisakatuparan. Matingkad ang panlulumo sa mga paring parang hari ang pamamalakad sa parokya. Masakit malaman na hanggang ngayon ang Church of the Poor ay napakahirap maramdaman. Ngunit sa kabila ng mga sanang mapait, meron din namang mga sanang puno ng pag-asa. Ipinahayag ng marami ang pangarap na ipagpatuloy ang dialogo at ang nasimulang pakikinig sa isa't isa. Ituloy ang sama-samang 
pagpaglalakbay. Kayo naman sa araw na ito, kaya naman sa araw na ito, inilulunsad natin ang traslasyon Arkham Roadmap. Ito ang mapang gagabay sa atin sa ating paglalakbay sa mga susunod na taon. Ito ay ang mga konkretong layunin at gawain para tulungan tayo sa mabuti at maayos na pamamamahala at paglilingkod. Ito ang pagpapatuloy ng ating sinudality at pagpapanibago ng simbahan sa Arkidioseses ng Maynila. Sa mga susunod na araw, ito ay ipapaliwanag at ilalahad sa atin ng mga parok sa ating mga parokya at mga pamayanan upang lubos nating maunawaan at maisakatuparan. Pope Francis wants that the Synod will not just produce more documents, but change the dynamics in the local churches. This is what we are going to do in the Archdiocese of Manila. We wish to continue our mutual listening, our communion, our participation, and our mission. To be a synodal church, we must not only engage in conversations, but also in conversions of structures and systems of policies and strategies to be suitably channeled for the evangelization of today's world. Listening is just the beginning. Walking together and working together for a better future for the church necessitate a new mindset and a new heart purified by our configuration to Christ. I invite everyone to participate and walk with our Mahal na Poong Nazareno, the focal image of the Church in Manila, in his translation to the different cities of our Archdiocese. Let us allow him to renew our parishes, schools, ministries, and apostolates. Let the translation Arkham Roadmap help us to translate our salamat and sana into concrete actions and strategic directions. We also ask Our Lady, La Nuestra Señora de Guía, to guide us in our path to the implementation of our Traslacion Arkham Roadmap, our journey of renewal in the Archdiocese of Manila. Amen. Natapos na ang humiliya ni Cardinal Advincula at sa kanyang pagkupaliwanag ng pagdiriwang natin ng pagbabasbas ng mga langis at ng gagawin natin maya-maya lamang na pagre-renew ng commitment o vows ng mga kaparian. May we request all priests to please stand. Ngayon ay sisimulan na ang renewal of vows ng mga kaparian. Napamunganaan ni Cardinal Advincula ang Archbishop of Manila. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, 
who in Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us. Are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's Church, which prompted by love of Him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Please all stand. Maganap na ang renewal of these promises ng mga para sa harap ng Arsobispo ng Maynila, Cardinal Advin Kula. Ngayon ay pinatayo na ang mga As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out His gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the High Priest, so that they may lead you to Him who is the source of salvation. Ito ay ang kantang panalangin ng mga laiko para sa mga kaparian na ang mga pari bilang mga lingkod ng Panginoon ay nangangailangan din ng panalangin upang manatili maging tapat, mapagkumbaba, mapagmahal sa kanilang paglilingkod bilang mga lingkod ni Kristo. Let us pray for the sick, aged, and dying priests. Beg the good Lord to give them strength to unite their suffering with the sufferings of Christ for their sanctification and of the Church. So for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Higit sa lahat, ang kanyang kabunian, Cardinal Advincula, ang mga obispo, ay humihingi rin ng panalangin dahil sa kanilang malaking pananagutan ang iniatang sa kanilang responsibilidad bilang mabuting pastol, guro at lingkod ng lahat ng isang diocese o archdiocese. Ipanalangin natin ang ating mga obispo. May the Lord keep us all in His charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Natapos na ang renewal of priestly commitment at ang panalangin ng mga laiko para sa at ang panalangin ng mga laiko para sa mga pari 
at para sa kanilang obispo. Ngayon ay ihahanda natin ang pagbabasbas ng mga langis na gagamitin sa mga sakramento ng ating simbahan. Bukod sa Christmas, ang Holy Thursday muli ay ang pagsasariwa rin ng pangako ng mga pari sa harap ng kanilang obispo. Tulad ng nabanggit kanina, ito, araw na ito, Holy Thursday, ay ang paggunitan natin sa pagkatatag ni Kristo ng banal na Eucharistia at ng sakramento ng pagpapari o priesthood. Ngayon, pangumunuan, pinumunuan ng mga diakono ang pagbibitbit ng mga langis na babasbasan. Pumapasok na ngayon ang prosesyon ng mga langis na babasbasan sa altar sa harap ng mga tao ng kanyang kabunyaan Cardinal Advin Kulay. Dala-dala nila ngayon ang lalagyan ng, ng oil of catechumens, oil of the sick, and oil for the Christian. Ang mga diakono, ang silang may pigpit na mga lalagyan ng langis na babasbasan. Dala-dala nila ang oil for catechumens o yung mga bibinyagan natin. Ito ang ginagamit na lang sa pagbibinyag. Ang oil for the sick na siyang ginagamit ng mga pare sa pagpapahid sa mga may sakit. At ganoon din ang oil for the chrism na siyang ginagamit naman sa mga ordinasyon. Kasama rin sa presisyon ang mga nagdadala o may dala ng alak at tubig at ng tinapay. ay nasa tono rin kung mapapansin natin ng pagbasa o mga pabasa o pasyon. Ngayon ay ilalatag na ilalagay na sa mga sa mesa ang mga langis. Isa-isa itong ipapatong sa mesa aayusin at iyahanda para sa gagawing pagbabasbas. Narito po at tanggapin nang ito ay pabanalin ang langis na aming hain magiging kri sa amin bigay ng Diyos 
स्वप्नाबोति Ito ay mabigat sapagat ito ay puno ng mga nangis na siyang ipamimigay sa iba't ibang simbahan, parokya dito sa Archdiocese of Manila. Ngayon ay umaakit na rin sa altar ang mga mag-aalay o magdadala ng tinapay at anak na gagamitin sa banal na misa. Tinatanggap ngayon ni Cardinal Anbincula ang tinapay at ang anak sa banal at nagagamitin mamaya sa consecration. Pinanatili ang katahimikan, kabanalan ng, sa loob dito ng Manila Katedral, dahil na sa mga sandi ng ito. Ngayon ay Brothers and sisters, si we gratitude to God, Lord of life and of death. We gather the oil, fruit of the earth, and of human work. Let us bless the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent His Son to heal those who are brokenhearted and to cure our infirmities. Let us invoke the spirit of consolation that all those who shall be anointed with this oil may be freed from sin and receive consolation and life. God of all consolation, you chose and sent your Son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit, the Consoler, into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, with this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver them from every affliction. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Nabasbasan na ang langis para sa mga may sakit or the oil of the sick. Ngayon ay hihipan, hihingahan ng mahal na kardinal ang mga langis bilang tanda ng paglukob din ng banal na espiritu. Ang pagbaba ng banal na espiritu na siyang magpapabanal sa mga langis na ito. Pinubuksan na isa-isa ang nalagyanan ng mga langis. Pagkatapos, dasalin ng mahal na kardinal. Ngayon ay kanyang hihipan o hihingahan ang mga lalagyanan una ng langis para sa mga may sakit. Let us pray that God our Almighty Father will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it 
may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. Ngayon naman ay ang consecration of the Christian. Isa-isa na ngayong hinahinahan, kinihipan sa tanda rin ng krus ang mga langis na simbolo ng pagpapabanal ng Espiritu Santo o nung sa tulong ng Espiritu Santo ang pag-ihip, ang paghinga ay tanda rin ng Espiritu Santo at buhay God our Maker source of all growth in holiness accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Amen. church in the beginning at your command Lamas. the earth produced fruit bearing trees Christmas, from the fruit of the olive Amen. tree you have provided Amen. us Amen. with oil for holy chrism the prophet Amen. david Amen. sang Amen. of the life Amen. and joy Amen. that the oil would bring us Amen. in the sacraments of your love Amen. after the avenging Amen. flood the dove returning to noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses' brother anointed him priest. This too, foreshadowed greater things to come. After your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved Son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that Chrism takes its name. And with Chrism, we have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. May this chrism be a sign, make this chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam, and when they are anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through the sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life In the glory of your kingdom, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Ngayon ay naganap ang consecration of the Christian, the oil of the sick was blessed, and the Christian oil was consecrated. Ngayon ay iinsensuhan pagkatapos takpan ang lalagyanan ng mga langis. Ito ngayon ay iinsensuhan ng ating mahal na Arsobispo.
muli dalawang langis ang binasbasan, ang langis para sa mga may sakit ay binasbasan, at ang langis naman ng krisma ay consecrated. Ito ang ginagamit natin sa binyag, sa kumpil, sa ordinasyon. Ngayon po ay isa-isa ng kinukuha ng mga diakono ang nalagyanan ng mga langis. Pabalik sa isang altar kung saan ito ay iyahanda naman para sa pagbibigay sa mga iba't ibang pari, parish priest, mamaya pagkatapos ng misa upang kanilang gamitin sa pagdiriwang ng mga sakramentong nakalaan sa mga langis na ito. Muli isang Maringal na prosesyon din ang gagawin sa paghahatid ng mga langis sa isang altar. Pinangunahan ng isang ng mga servers. Napakaganda ng sinabi ni Cardinal Advincula kanina tungkol sa pagbabasbas ng mga langis. Kasabay nito ay ang pagpapanibago, renewal ng pangako ng mga kaparian. Bakit daw kailangan ng renewal? Bakit daw dalawang mahalagang bagay ang kanyang binanggit sa kanyang homelia? Sa pagdiriwang natin ng misa na ito, ang renewal of priestly commitment at ang consecration blessing ng mga langis. Tayo po ngayon ay dadako na sa paghahanda ng altar para sa Eucharistia, pagdiriwang ng Eucharistia. Sabi nga ni Cardinal Advincula kanina, bakit kailangan ng pagpapanibago ng pagsasariwa sapagkat ang simbahan daw, ang ating pananampalataya ay laging nangangailangan ng pagpapanibago. The Church is always in need of reform and purification, sabi ni Cardinal, na ang simbahan, ang bawat isa sa atin, dapat laging nakahandang mabago. Linisin. Yan ang mga magagandang punto ni Cardinal Advincula sa kanyang homiliya kanina. Ang keyword daw ng ating pagdiriwang ngayon ay ang salitang renewal, pagpapanibago at pagsasariwa. Kaya nga sa araw na ito rin, 
ay nag-launch tayo ng tinatawag nating translation Arkham Roadmap. Ito ay marahil bunga, ito ay ang tugon ng Archdiocese of Manila sa naging sinodality na pinamunuan ni Pope Francis. At makikita po natin binalikan ni Cardinal Advincula na noon pa man sa kasaysayan ng ating simbahan, laging mayroong mga programa, mga hakbang ng simbahan tungkol sa pagpapanibago at pagbabago. Simula pa sa Vatican II, PCP II, ngayon mayroon tayong sinodality ni Pope Francis. Lahat ng iyan ay tanda ng buhay, lumalago at umuunlad na simbahan. Kaya ang kanyang panawagan, huwag tayong matakot sa pagbabago. Huwag tayong matakot sa mga bagong bagay na maaaring dumating. Mga bagay na maaaring magpaunlad pa sa atin, magpabuti sa atin. Kaya nga yung translation Arkham Roadmap, yan po ay ilang buwan nating gagawin ng sama-sama. Sabi ni Cardinal, ipagpatuloy natin ang sama-samang paglalakbay. Ah, gamit ang imahe ng traslasyon ng mahal na pong Jesus Nazareno. Tayo ay patuloy na maglalakbay. Patungo sa kaganapan ng ating buhay. Patungo kay Kristo na ating sinusundan ang ating kaligtasan. Kaya sa araw na ito, nagkaroon ng pagsasariwa ng pangako ng binyag. Uh, pero ang mga pari, tayong mga laiko, ipinapaalala sa atin na lahat tayo ay tumanggap at nakikiisa sa misyon ni Kristo bilang hari, pari at propeta. Nung tayo ay binyagan, lalo na nung tayo rin ay nakumpilan, pinagtibay pa ng sakramento ng kumpil ang misyon na iyan. Na tayo lalo na ang mga kaparian ay tinatawag na tumahak sa landas ni Kristo. Makiisa, makibahagi sa misyon ni Kristo. At ano nga ba ang dala ni Kristo sa mundo? Pagpapanibago. Binago niya ang mukha. Siya ang naging katuparan ng pangako ng Ama sa lumang tipan ng mga propeta. Binigay niya tayo ng mga bagong paraan. Marami siyang binago sa buhay ng tao at yun ay magpapatuloy patuloy na panawagan sa ating lahat bilang mga binyagang kristyano tayo dapat ay nakahanda na baguhin at maging bahagi ng pagbabago ni Kristo para sa ikaliligtas ng mundo Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation, and newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that His one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people He has made His own, but with a brother's kindness, He also chooses men to become sharers in His sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. 
they are to renew in His name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal banquet to lead your holy people in charity to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love and so Lord with all the angels and saints we too give you thanks as in an exaltation we acclaim so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, 
upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, my but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Be. The body of Christ. Amen.
nagaganap ngayon ang communion, consecre o pagbibigay ng communion sa mga tao. Sa gitna, makikita natin si Cardinal Advincula kasama ang ating mahal na nunsyo, Archbishop Charles Brown. Kasama ang ibang mga pari din na nagbibigay ng communion sa mga laiko dahil hindi naman po lahat ng laikong nagpunta ay makakapasok sa loob ng Manila Cathedral. Sa labas po ay meron tayong mga monitors din kung saan marami tayong mga laiko, mga kapatid nating nakikisa sa pagdiriwang na ito at nagbibigay suporta sa kanilang mga pastol, sa kanilang mga pari. Kaya mamaya pagkatapos ng misa, pagkatapos ng ilang taon, na hindi natin nagawa ito dahil sa pandemya ay muli nating makikita ang mainit, ang masayang pagtanggap, pagbati ng mga tao sa kanilang mga pari. Ang Christmas po ay pagpapaalala sa atin ng pagkakaisa natin kay Kristo sa sakramento ng binyag kung saan tayo ay bininyagan upang makihati pare-pareho sa misyon ni Kristo. At ang misyon na yan ay ang maglingkod, ay ang magligtas. Kaya nga, ngayon ding araw na ito, Holy Thursday, Wede Santo, inaalala natin ginugunita ang pagtatatag ni Kristo ng banal na Eucharistia at ng pagpapari, kung saan nandoon ang diwa ng paglilingkod. Pero ang paglilingkod na ito ay kapwa, mga pari, mga laiko. Isinasariwa natin ngayon, pagpapanibago ng pangako natin pare-pareho na tayo ay makikibahagi sa misyon ng paglilingkod ni Kristo. Kaya tulad ng binanggit ni Cardinal, ang keyword sa pagdiriwang ng ito ng Christmas ay ang pagsasariwa, pagpapanibago. Ngayong araw din, makikita natin ang pagpapanibago, pagsasariwa ng relasyon, ng pagkakaisa ng mga pari sa kanilang obispo. na ito ay tinawag nating Christmas na galing din sa salitang Kristo na ang ibig sabihin ay Anointed Messiah. Sa pasimula, ang Christmas ay ginaganap tuwing Huwebe Santo, Holy Thursday, kung saan nagkakatipon ang mga pari ang kanilang obispo, ang mga laiko. Pero ganun pa man, sa panahon ni Pope Paul VI, ay pinayagan niya ang ibang araw sa pagsasagawa ng Christmas malapit sa Holy Week upang ang lahat ng pari ng isang diocese ay makadalo alam natin na sa ibang diocese, may mga pari, may mga simbahan na malayo sa sentro, sa kanilang katedral. Kaya nagagawa rin natin ang o ginagawa ang Christmas sa ibang diocese, hindi lamang ng Webesanto, 
kundi ayon sa pangangailangan din nila araw malapit sa Holy Week maaaring gawin ng isang diocese ang Christmas upang ang lahat ay makadalo ay makiisa sa pagdiriwang. Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Si Father C. Marinay, ang Chancellor ng Archdiocese of Manila. We also honor him through our silver, golden, and diamond jubilarians. Citation, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila. In thanksgiving to the Lord, the giver of all graces, his Eminence Jose F. Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila, and the clergy of the Archdiocese of Manila gratefully recognize for his 25, 50, and 65 years in the priestly ministry as a faithful steward of the mysteries of Christ God's people were reborn in the waters of baptism, nourished with the living bread and the word of life, renewed through the sacraments, and led in faith, hope, and love. Given this sixth day of April, on the occasion of the celebration of Crazy Mass of the Archdiocese of Manila at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Tremuros, Manila. Signed, Jose F. Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila. The Silver Jubilarians Reverend Father John Z. Barrow, Team Ministry Member, National Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Sinisimulan po natin ngayon bigyan Reverend ng Father parangal ang mga Silver Jubilarians. Si Concepcion, Chaplain, Santo Nino de Paz Chapel, Makati City. Father John Barrow, Father David Reverend Concepcion. Reverend Father Roberto V. Fabilio, LRMS, 
Parochial Vicar, St. Peter the Apostle Parish, Reverend Father Albert Cecilio A. Flores, Director, Archdiocesan Archives and Museum, Reverend Father Marion C. Munda, School Director and Cluster Head, Three and four. Father Albert Flores, Father Mark Munda, Reverend Monsignor Noli A.K. LRMS, Team Minister and Moderator, Chaplain of the Eucharistic Lord, Reverend Father Wilmer R. Rosario, Rector, Parish Priest, Archdiocesan Shrine of the Divine Mercy. Reverend Father Rufino C. Sescon, Jr. Rector and Parish Priest, Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene. Reverend Father Mario William G. Tan, LRMS. Parochial Vicar, Archdiocesan Shrine of St. Joseph. Sila po ay tumanggap ng certificate the golden jubilarians. ang ating mga silver jubilarians from Cardinal Advincula. Reverend Ngayon Monsignor po ang mga golden jubilarians. Ignacio, retired. Reverend Father John G. Ledon, MSCC. Parochial Vicar, Our Lady of Remedies Parish. The Diamond Jubilarians, 65 years Tayo in the ministry. Tayo po ay meron ding Diamond Jubilarian sa taong na ito. Reverend Father Domingo V. Baybay, retired. Sila Reverend po Monsignor Severino O. Lorica, retired. His Eminence, Gaudencio B. Carnal Rosales, D.D. Archbishop Emeritus of Manila to be received by Reverend Father Reggie Malikten. Ang dati nating Arsobispo ng Maynila, His Eminence Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales ay isa po sa mga tumanggap ng parangal bilang isa sa mga Diamond Jubilarians ng taong ito. Taon-taon po ay ginagawa natin ang pagbibigay parangal sa mga kaparian po natin na naglingkod sa mahabang panahon. Ang ating mga Silver Jubilarians, Golden Jubilarians, and Diamond Jubilarians. Sila ay tumanggap ng mga plaki, Certificate of Appreciation, na inabot ni Cardinal Advincula. Your Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila, my brother priest, and the people of God in the Archdiocese of Manila, the Office of the Manila Guest Priest is happy to inform all of us that six of our guest priests qualify to join the three-year incarnation program in their desire to be part of the Presbyterium of our Church. In observance of our approved guidelines, those who wish and have been qualified must be presented to a blessed gathering such as this, now, these six brothers, who are our guest priests, have been working diligently in the, our Archdiocese for some time. They have met the requirements, and they are ready to have themselves subjected to this said program. Let me be clear that only when they have gone through this required three-year program and evaluated by their brother priest, will they be recommended to your eminence for incarnation? I wish to assure you that all the requirements and documents have been checked by my office. Also, the respective bishops and superiors gave their written 
approval for them to undergo this program. May I therefore present to you, Brother Priest, and especially to your eminence, in your term as the Archbishop of Manila, the first batch of our incarnation program candidates. Father July Santelices from the Diocese of Legaspi. <laughs> Father Norman Apple from the Diocese of Legaspi. <laughs> Father Leo Casas from the Diocese of Masbate. <laughs> Father Robert Young from the Prelature of Batanes <laughs> and Archie, Father Archie Perez of the Congregation of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Mary. <laughs> Let us accompany these six brothers of ours with our prayerful support and inspiring examples as they begin their first of three-year journey all of them would like to prove themselves worthy to be members of our priestly fraternity and take part in our fruitful ministry here in the Archdiocese of Manila. Thank you. Sa panuluno ng Episcopal Vicar for Guest Priest, Monsignor Matt Garcia, ay formal natin wini-welcome sa Archdiocese of Manila ang mga bagong pari nung incarnated dito sa Archdiocese of Manila. Announcement The priests will exit through the left transept door. Please leave your chasubles and booklets on your seats. The holy oils will be distributed to priests as they exit. Everyone else will exit through the main exit door towards the back of the cathedral. Please stand. Dear brothers, from Christ, Master, Priest, and Pastor, we have been called to the order of the priesthood. In this Eucharistic celebration, we have willed to renew our commitment to live in a manner always worthy of the vocation we have received. We have also blessed the chrism and the oil of the sick to emphasize the mystery of the Church as a sacrament of Christ who sanctifies every reality and situation of life. To you, brother bishops and priests, they are now entrusted in order that through your ministry, divine grace, bringer of strength and life, may flow in the souls. Respect, venerate, and protect with particular care these oils, signs of God's grace the persons, the places, and things that will be blessed by them may radiate the very holiness of God, who by a marvelous gift of His love has willed that in the sacramental signs the events of salvation history might be mystically renewed. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. <laughs> Pagbabasbas ng mga langis at ang pagpapalibago o pagsasariwan ng pangako ng mga pari sa araw na ito. 
Mamaya pong hapon ay gagawin naman natin dito sa Manila Cathedral ang pagsisimula ng tinatawag nating Paschal Triduum. Ang Mass of the Lord's Supper ay pamumunuan ng kanyang kabunyaan Jose Cardinal Advincula dito po sa Manila Cathedral sa ganap na ikalima ng hapon. At kayo pong lahat ay iniimbitahan din namin na makisa sa mga gawain na g- ipagdiriwang natin sa mga susunod na araw. Bukas, Veneration of the Cross, at sa Sabado ay ang Easter Vigil. Sama-sama po nating pagnilayan, ipagdiwang ang kaligtasan na inalay ni Kristo para sa ating lahat. Patuloy nating ipagdasal ang mga pari. Sila po ngayon ay sasalubungin marahil ng kanilang mga parokyano na naghihintay sa kanila sa labas sapagat ang umagang ito lalo na ay isang pagdiriwang sa iba't ibang parokya, sa iba't ibang community. Ang bati nga ng mga pari, Happy Feast Day! Ah, maligayang araw ng mga pari. Kaya kami po dito sa TV Maria ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo pong pakikisa sa pagdiriwang na ito. Muli po, patuloy nating gawing banal. Patuloy nating gawing mahalaga ang mga araw na ito ng mahal na araw. Makisa tayo, magnilay at magdasal. Ako po si Father Hans Magdurulang. Maraming salamat po. God bless you po sa inyong lahat.